Okay, welcome. This is an overview of career education at LMC. We have great careers that you can complete in a short amount of time, the training for, um, and get into great careers quickly. So let's take a look. So we heard from folks who are interested in allied health pathways, nursing pathways. We're also gonna cover some other areas too. So the short-term training um, that leads to career education jobs. There is a huge demand of openings that will be happening. It's 43% projected that these jobs that are gonna be available will require certificate training or two-year community college training. So lots of opportunities. Our CTE programs are run very hands-on. You get to learn about what it's like to be an EMT or work in an actual functioning autom automotive shop on campus where we have real cars that come in from the community, our faculty and staff and students bring our cars there, I bring my car there, but you get to look at what is it like to actually run um, an auto repair shop. We also have counselors that are out in the community. So our high school counselor is Tiffany Welter that's um, representing LMC in the K-12 system. We also have Brittany West who's working out in the community too. And then I work at the Pittsburgh campus. Um, currently we're offering virtual services during COVID. There's also internships and career opportunities for folks interested in CTE. So that's always an opportunity. And just wanted to do a quick overview of popular options at LMC. Just because you pick a career education pathway doesn't mean that you can't transfer later. Oftentimes we do have students who transfer and then they come back to LMC to complete a certificate in a technical trade because these programs pay so well. So for example, I have a student I'm working with right now. He studied psychology at Cal State East Bay and his job outlooks don't pay very well right now. So what he's thinking about is coming back to study an industrial trade, specifically process technology or e-tech um, and getting a certificate in that so he can get better paying jobs. So that happens a lot with folks. So it's something to think about. So I wanted to expand that list I mentioned earlier. So we have a top 15 high pay careers with short-term training here at LMC. So our top money makers for our majors in the short amount of time is our E-Tech program and P-Tech program. So folks could be making up to $100,000 a year with overtime with those programs. They can be completed in a year and a half with our P-Tech program. E-Tech takes two years to complete. Our construction trades, if you get into a union, you could be making 50 to 100,000 a year. Our LVNs are making about 60,000 a year in the Bay Area, roughly. Welding is also very popular. It takes two years to complete that. IT computer support can actually make very good money with just a one and a half to two year program. Um, and that's not going away. Those, the demand for those jobs are huge and will continue to be huge. Um, auto mechanics dealing, working in dealerships are making $25 to $20 an hour. Drone pilots, $30 an hour, so close to $60,000 a year. Oops. And with our drone pilots, this is an introductory program for our pilot program. It starts in fall, it ends in December, so it's in August to December, but you wanna continually be um, practicing and building your skills to be getting a job that's gonna pay that much. Sound engineering technicians, when you get into a union for electrical um, sound, you could be making up to $60 an hour, but very good pay there. And that's out of our recording arts department. Accounting assistants, 18 to $22 an hour. EMTs can make 16 to $24 an hour. That's a program you can get done in one semester. So if you're working retail right now or food service, but you want a job that's related to something you want to do later, get some experience working in the healthcare field, EMT is a great option to do. Um, it's something you could do in fall and get completed within four months and start working as an EMT in January or February next year. Forklift operators are making 17 to $23 an hour. And that's something that's a short-term program, one semester. Let's say that you just want a better paying job while you're in school, that could be an option. We also use that certification for forklift. You can combine it with P-TECH um, and make more money too and have more opportunities. Registered nursing is one of our most popular programs here at LMC. It's a great program. Um, it has two years of prerequisites and then you do the program and it's two years. So a lot of people don't think about how much the prerequisites take, but it does take some time. Firefighters are making good money in the Bay Area, um, 50 to 60,000, and that generally can be more depending on which department you get into. Um, police officers are making $36 an hour to make um, 72,000 a year. Those two programs are both um, two year. 
full associate degree programs. So our career technical professions are organized by different fields and sectors. So health, safety, and human services, we have administration of justice, fire technology, EMT, nursing, and child development. We also have the arts, so that's recording arts, graphic design, and journalism. Next, we have business, which encompasses small business. So if you're an entrepreneur and you want to make your own business, there's a major for that. Accounting business office professional. And we also have business for transfer. If you wanna start out with a business certificate or associate's degree, you could later on transfer. And a lot of our students do that with that program. Our computer tech program encompasses computer repair, information technology, computer networking, and internet security. And lastly, I wanna highlight our industrial trades just because these trades make a lot of money. Compared to the other ones, there's this combination of technical skill you have to have in addition, you have some background with science. So you understand how chemistry works and physics works and how it applies to working in water treatment or working in a refinery or a beer and wine um, production place. So they're working with a lot of um, liquid and material and moving them through many different pipes that it can get complicated. Um, so these folks get paid very, very well because these companies are making a lot of money out of the pro different products they're making. So it's important to be trained well you can have a certificate and get into this field. You don't need to complete a full associate's degree. Um, so let's take a look a little closer at these different um, industrial trades. So automotive technology, process technology, electrical and electronic instrumentation technology, welding technology, and we have a pre-apprenticeship associated with that, construction pre-apprenticeship, we have drone technology and forklift operation and warehouse logistics. So that's our overview of industrial trades. Definitely, if you're someone that wants to be out and about, you may want to work outdoors, you want to work with your hands and have a project where you see from start to finish, these careers are very fulfilling for folks. You're not sitting behind a computer all day. All right, so just a quick note about career tech training. So for industrial trades, you can learn it at a community college, you can learn it at a local union. And there's also vocational and private for-profit schools. Please be careful when you're shopping around where you wanna get your training. I don't want you to go somewhere where there could be a risk of the institution losing their accreditation. You may start a program, but they may have to like close the program out. I've seen that happen with some of our private for-profit schools, unfortunately. So if you're considering that route, please email me. I'd be happy to give you some feedback and some pros and cons. Um, and plus these for-profit schools are very, very expensive. So I just wanna put that out there. Please be careful, do your research. Okay, so our first ones is E-Tech and P-Tech. This program um, work, these programs work hand in hand. So on the E-Tech instrumentation side, you're working in an industrial setting. They're often working with um, water treatment or refineries making oil or making beer, wine, beverages, food, any kind of product or chemical product, um, hairspray, for example. Um, it all is made by folks that have to be trained in these different um, skills. So process technicians also work in those same fields. Um, one other field that the e-tech folks work in is working at BART because it's electrical. So they are also uh, big hires of uh, our E-Tech graduates. And also um, Tesla will hire both of our graduates in these programs. These are the moneymaker programs. So if you wanna make up to $100,000 a year, if you're 18 right now, if you finish this program by the time you're 20, you'll make a million dollars by the time you're 30. So if you're really looking at staying in the Bay Area, a secure, stable job, these are the two to really look into. Okay, so the main difference between these two, so our electrical technicians and instrumentation technicians, they know how to install electrical equipment, they know how to repair it and calibrate it. So many of the equipment that they're, the electrical equipment they're working with, they measure pressure and temperature. So those things have to be accurately measured at all times in order to make marshmallows, for example, okay? So, um, so they're, they're doing that constantly throughout the day. And these are processes that take 24 seven. If you're making a food product, a chemical or water, treating water to make it drinkable, it happens 24 seven. So these folks are working a lot. They're working a lot of hours. They can get a lot of overtime. So the E-Tech people, they calibrate things. The P-Tech people, they're in charge of the process. So they turn on the process of making milk, 
okay? Processing milk, for example. Um, so they turn it on safely. If anything's a little bit off, they can try to adjust the pressure or temperature to make things flow a little better, start the flow faster or slow it down a little bit. Um, and then if there's any issues that come up, so this PTEC operator on the bottom here, it, much of it is automated. So if there's an issue, there's gonna be an alert that comes up and then they'll take a look at it, see if they can adjust it. If they can't, they have to shut down the whole process. They put a work order in for the e-tech folks to come in and fix something. And then they turn everything back on safely. So that's how these two folks work together. Um, so it's very team oriented, very safety oriented. So this is a little bit more of some of our e-tech folks. Robotics is huge right now. Tesla's hiring e-tech folks quickly and they cannot wait for our folks to graduate because they're working with robotics to create their cars, but they need folks to um, program the robotics, repair them, install them and maintain them. They also are working, um, our process technicians and e-tech technicians are working in these other areas, food and beverage manufacturing, water treatment. Water treatment is a huge field. Many people are retiring. People don't know about these jobs. They are making over $100,000 a year. Biofuel chemical manufacturing, a new growing field. And these are more pictures of our process technicians. So these are folks making steel. So they're washing the process. If there's any issues, they're shutting it down. Um, and it's pretty chill. Like you're working on a small team of folks. You guys are looking out for each other. Um, there's problem solving happening within it also, but it's pretty interesting. Here's our wastewater operator um, salary ranges. <clears throat> so you're starting out at 56 to 70,000 a year and you can work up. A lot of folks will work up within these industries. Here's a quick look at our construction pre-apprenticeship program. This runs for one semester. So that's gonna run in fall and it'll prepare you to go into any of the construction trades. This is a little sample of some different um, Areas you could be working in within construction, elevator installer repairs, boiler makers, construction building inspectors, electricians, and plumbers, and pipe fitters. So making good money. Um, our drone program. So this is a one semester program. This is a free non-credit program. And our forklift warehouse operations program is three classes. You do it in fall, it could be done within a semester. All right, so I wanna leave you all with my contact information. If you're currently a high school student, you can book with Tiffany Walter. I'll put these, um, these contacts within the chat box when we get to the main room so you can have that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, okay, so... I am our pre-nursing counselor. I see about 80% of my pre-nursing students every single day. So I kind of do this all the time. <laughs> so I'm happy to share um, what I've been able to learn over the last few years doing this. Okay, let's see. Um, all right. Okay, so allied health and pre-nursing. A lot of students, um, when you do your prerequisites for these pathways, they overlap. So a lot of students will start out pre-nursing, but they also are keeping their eye out on some of the allied health professions. And then what's really great is you could apply to both and just kind of see where you get in. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about an overview of LMC's nursing requirements. We're gonna talk about allied health and what professions we're talking about there. We're gonna talk about strategies for applying and some success when you get into these programs. All right, so these are our two programs we here, have here at LMC. We have an associate degree of nursing. We also have a licensed vocational degree um, or licensed vocational certificate of achievement. So our associate degree in nursing is based on a scoring rubric. So you do need to make sure that you are getting high grades in all of your science prerequisites. And we'll go over that in a minute. It opens every January for the following fall. It takes about two years to get the prerequisites complete. A lot of times people don't realize how long it takes, but it does take pretty long just because you have to get A's in anatomy, physiology, and microbio to be competitive. So I just wanna keep that in mind. Um, once you get into the RM program, it is two years. 
This is what's really cool though. If you qualify as low income, um, you pay a dollar a unit to go to nursing school. So that's unbelievable. So you're paying about $15 for your classes and like $20 for a student fee each semester. It's unbelievable. So it's a really great deal. Our LVM program is operated by lottery. So as long as you get all the prerequisites done with a certain GPA and it's, per, it's more flexible. I think it's like um, high two point something like a 2.75 and all the prerequisites. So you don't have to get straight A's to get into our LVM program. Um, it opens every one and a half years. So it flip flops in terms of when it starts. So one year, it, this year it started in January. The next time around, it's gonna start in an August. So it'll start in a fall. So it flip flops. It's a little hard to keep man to manage the application cycles for that, but feel free to meet with me and then we'll make sure we get those uh, dates to you. The prerequisites take about a year. Um, once you get in, it's a year and a half program. All right, so applying to nursing programs. These are the basic things that many nursing programs are looking at. So they're looking at prerequisites, primarily the sciences to get the most points, but you'll also have English, psychology, and math as part of those prerequisites sometimes. Healthcare experiences certifications. If you have um, an EMT certification, medical assisting, CNA, you get extra points for that. If you speak another language, you can get points for that. So if you're fluent right now, or if you plan to take a foreign language, including sign language. Um, if you take sign language, for example, or Spanish, for example, for four semesters straight, you'll get five points for fluency for language. TEAS test six, we only take the first try when you take the TEAS test. TEAS test is kind of like um, the SAT for nursing. Diversity, if you have um, a background of that you're a veteran, for example, or that you have a commitment to working with like low income populations or rural populations, if you want to work with diverse populations, um, that's usually a plus in many nursing schools. When you write your application, you want to speak to that. And you also want to have some experience. You don't have to work in a healthcare setting and work with diverse folks. If you're tutoring right now at the Boys and Girls Club, that's something where you understand different cultures and you have ability to communicate with folks and like you just understand those nuances. So that's good to show that. Um, and so that ties into this commitment to underserved populations. All right, so these are our prerequisites for our RN program. So anatomy, and these are the, um, the actual numbers. But when you go to our nursing website, all this is listed on there with the handbook. So anatomy, physiology, and micro, you get the most points for those. I recommend that you take these one at a time. Do not double up on these because you increase your chances of getting Bs in them. You need to get A's to be competitive at any nursing school. English composition, you're probably gonna take that in fall. We have algebra two or higher, and then intro to psychology. Um, chemistry is kind of the shadow prerequisite. You need it to get into micro, so don't forget about that one. And then there's a Bioscience 30, which is an intro to anatomy physiology that is good for you to take. That's a great class to take for summer. If you're planning to take something and you wanna get a head start, take Bioscience 30. When you type it out, you wanna write BIOSC-030 in summer and look for that course. Um, otherwise you could take it in fall. Um, but that will help you do well in anatomy and physiology. All right, so our LVM program has similar prerequisites. No recency requirement for this um, program. Same with our RN program. You could take it 10 years ago and have it still count. This won't be the case for many of you as high school students because you're probably just starting to take them now. Um, the LVM prerequisites is English composition, intro to anatomy and physiology, or anatomy and physiology, the full five unit courses. Algebra two or higher, nutrition, drug dosage, and medical terminology. So those are the prerequisites. I often tell students, apply to LVN and RN and see where you get in. Both of them lead to amazing and great careers. Use it as a backup if you need to, if you know you wanna be RN later, you could do our LVN to RN bridge program later. Our LVN application opens every three semesters. so. For, for this group here, you could potentially apply in fall 23 to start spring 24. With our nursing for associate's degree, registered nursing, and for LVN, all the prerequisites must be completed before applying. All right, so let's take a look at allied health. 
So what is allied health? And I also threw in our related kind of healthcare career. So if you know you love hospital settings, you love clinical settings, you love helping people around health issues, these are some things you might look at. Psychiatric technician, radiology technician, respiratory therapist, sonography technician, paramedic or EMT. Um, and of these, these that I just mentioned, psychiatric technician is available at San Joaquin Delta in Stockton. So I would take a look there. Radiology technician, you could do the prereqs here. Same for respiratory therapists and sonography. You do the prereqs here and then apply to those programs. EMT we offer here. Paramedic is at Las Positas College. You have to start out as being an EMT first and then apply to a paramedic school. There's not a lot of prerequisites for that. Dental hygienists do the prereqs here and apply to DVC has this program, Diablo Valley College in our district. CNA. That can be done at Contra Costa College for very affordable. So if you qualify as low income, you're paying a dollar a unit. If you are first time, full time free tuition, the FT3 promise, you pay um, zero for tuition as long as you're enrolled in 12 units for your first two years. So if you're if you choose to do CNA, maybe in fall or spring, that would be great. You can start working part time as a CNA and get that experience. Medical assisting. Um, it's not offered in the community college system. Really, you have to go to private school settings for that. Let me know if you're interested in that. Um, athletic training, they have that at DVC. Pharmacy technician, mostly at private schools, but I can help you find some places for that. So let's say that you're interested in some other things in a healthcare setting. So these are some other options that are bachelor degrees and higher. Art, drama, music therapist requires a master's degree. Um, occupational therapist is a master's degree later on. Speech and language therapist is a master's degree. And you could do a lot of different bachelor degrees before that. So you could do, you could start out LMC, get your CSU general education done or UC, or I get C general education done, transfer to a CSU or UC, for example, study psychology, for example, and then get the prerequisites required for these master's programs and then apply for that later. So that's kind of long-term, but counselors are here to provide you support throughout that process. If you're interested in being a health educator, many Kaiser, um, there's Kaiser jobs with health educators. Medical social workers, master's degree there. Physician assistant is a master's degree, and mental health therapist is a master's degree level. Um, so these are just a snapshot of different allied health and related healthcare careers. And I encourage all of you look up a day in the life of a respiratory therapist on YouTube, and just go through the list and see like which one would I like to do day to day. So this is a picture of a woman as a respiratory therapist. This is a program that you can find at a community college. Um, and I encourage you to do that because it's a lot more affordable to do it through the community college rather than private schools, private for-profit schools. All right, allied health pathways. These are common prerequisites needed. So intro to anatomy physiology, English, algebra two or higher, intro to physics, intro to bio, medical terminology, and many of them require you to have an associate's degree first. So when you're at LMC and you're taking your prerequisites, the prerequisites align really nicely with liberal arts, math, and science. So that should be your primary major or your secondary major. So if you know you're nursing, you could do registered nursing first and then have liberal arts, math, and science second as your like additional major. And we do encourage you to declare your major. You may have done something already, but you weren't sure which one to pick. Go back into your insight. And if you go under plan and progress, um, change your major to what is accurate to you because you will get emails specific to you based on your major. Okay, this is a little snapshot of how we score people when they're applying to our registered nursing program. So in our first phase, we just look at the application and this is where you get your points and you get the most points for your sciences. So if you have an academic degree, if you have an associate's degree, you get five points. If you have a bachelor's degree, you get 10 points. If you have a master's degree, you get 15 points. So most people are coming in with five points there. For your healthcare licensure, let's say you do EMT or CNA, you get five points for that. GPA prerequisite, science prerequisites, it's a big range. If you get all A's in anatomy, physiology, and micro, you earn 25 points. If you get all B's in anatomy, physiology, micro, you get 10 points. So I'm gonna be very straight up about this. Most students who get into our program, they're, you cannot get all B's in those. You will not get in. Just because the point um, overview with that is just too much of a stretch. So if you can swing getting all A's in anatomy, physiology, micro, or anatomy, physiology, A's, and a B in micro, that's doable. And then everything else, you wanna maximize your points in other areas, okay? 
Um, and I'm not saying this to say that you can't do it and to scare you. I wanna know what you're up against so you can be strategic. And the first thing I want you to do when you come here and fall, make an appointment with me so we can make your ed plan, okay? All right, so other prerequisites is English, psychology, math. If you get two A's and a B in there, you can max points at 15. Life experiences, you get five points there. So if you're a first generation college student or you have a disability or you have to work while in school or you're a refugee or you've had some kind of educational disadvantage or some kind of special circumstance that you've overcome um, or if you're low income. So it's, you can pick one of those areas and get five points. If you're a military veteran, you get five points. If you are fluent in another language, you get five points. And then the next phase, so generally people who are getting through, you're earning about 50 to 55 points in that first phase. And then we'll ask you to come take your T's test. So if you apply in January, you'll get a notice at the end of May or so to come take your T's test in June. Then they take your raw score out of 100 and then they add it to your first phase one score and then re-rank re everybody. So that's how we choose our applicants um, to come into our program. All right, so let me take a quick look in the chat, see what folks are saying here. Okay, let's see. So um, when you start out in the pre-nursing route, the question is um, what type of nursing is a good way to start in your first year of college? You're gonna be taking prerequisites first and then at some point getting some kind of healthcare experience. So I'd recommend EMT or CNA because you could do it at the community college for very affordable. Um, for prereqs going to a UC, they're pretty similar to the ones I mentioned and meet with me or a counselor to get the specifics about where you wanna to go to. All right. Okay, and to be a registered nurse, you could do it through the community college or go straight to the Cal State and get a BSN, so a bachelor's of nursing or an associate's degree of nursing. Okay, so I, I will share my email um, in the main room so you have that, so you could definitely email me more questions. So these are my tips about applying. Be open and apply broadly. You could apply to associate degree programs, bachelor's, and even entry-level MSNs. So you could do health education as a bachelor's and then apply for a master's in nursing later. You could apply to public and private universities and in and out of state. I do encourage all of you to get your healthcare experience now and commit over time. So if you can get that CNA or EMT within the first year and start working part-time, you can get a really nice recommendation letter and also that you've been working maybe for like two or three years before you even get into nursing school within the healthcare systems. If you can get into Kaiser, that would be great because they will pay for your nursing school later, just FYI. Um, and you can get in in any way and move up within there. So let's say you start in as like um, just a front desk kind of like greeting person or a concierge type person and you can move up from there. Um, maintain records of your healthcare experience because.